Hi, today we'll learn bubbles word. In this video, we'll talk about three things: why it's called bubbles word, how it works, and its implementation. And then we'll discuss its time complexity and how we can improve it. Without further ado, let's get started. Bubble sort is a sorting algorithm. It gets its name because elements tend to move up into the correct order, like bubbles rising to the surface. Let's see how it works with an example. Here's an array: two, seven, four, two. The problem is to sort the array in non-decreasing order using bubble sort. So in the end, it should be like this. When playing games, we need rules. It's the same here. So let me show you the rule. The idea is to compare the adjacent two elements. The larger one goes to the right. So if the one on the left is larger than the one on the right, then they swap their position. Otherwise, we do nothing. So much for the rules. Let's start the game. We start a comparison with the two elements on the very left, two and seven. We draw a rectangle to show what we're comparing right now. Two is smaller than seven, so we do nothing. Now we move the rectangle one step to the right and compare seven with four. Seven is larger than four, so seven should go to the right. We swap their position. Again, we move the rectangle one step to the right and compare seven with two. Seven is larger than two, so seven should go to the right. Time to swap their position. Up to now, we finished our first scan through the whole array. What happened is by swapping the positions, the largest element seven is already in its right position. We draw a dashed line here, right before seven, to remind ourselves that from now on we don't need to consider it anymore. Let's start our second scan by comparing the two elements on the very left, two and four. We draw a rectangle again to show what we are comparing right now. Two is smaller than four, so we do nothing. Now move the rectangle one step to the right and compare four with two. Four is larger than two, so it should go to the right. We swap their position. Now the rectangle reached the dash line, which indicates our second scan is finished. As we can see, four is in its right position now. So we move the dash line to somewhere before four to remind ourselves that from now on we don't need to do anything across the dash line. Let's start our third scan by comparing the two elements on the very left, two and two. We draw a rectangle again to show better what we're comparing now. Two equals two, so we do nothing. What's more, as the rectangle reached the dash line, the third scan is finished. After this scan, two is in its right position, so we can move the dash line before two. There's only one element left before the dash line, and nothing to compare with, so we can say this element is in its right position, and move the dash line before two. Okay, the whole array is now in a non-decreasing order, and the above process is how bubble sort works. It's always a good idea to draw and visualize the process of algorithm before the actual implementation. Now let's talk about how to implement bubble sort. Let's recall our example. We use array i and array i plus one to represent the two adjacent elements we're comparing. If array i is larger, then they swap their position. Otherwise, we do nothing. In the first scan of the array, we need to do three times of comparisons, which equals the array length m minus one. In the second scan, we need to do two times of comparisons, which equals the array length m minus two. In the third scan, we only need to do one comparison, which equals the array length m minus three. So now we can write a pseudo code of bubble sort, and it's the length of the input array. K means how many comparisons we need to do in each scan of the array. It starts with n minus one and ends with one. Each scan has one less comparison than the previous scan because there's one more element already in its right position. I means the position of the two adjacent elements we are comparing. It starts with zero and ends with k minus one, so that it ensures the comparison starts from the very left of the array, and in total there are k times of comparisons in the current scan.
In each comparison, if the one on the left is larger than the one on the right, then they swap their position. Otherwise, we do nothing. Now that we understand the pseudo code, let's translate it into real code. It doesn't matter what language we are using because the logic stays the same. We、we'll、use Python as an example, and here's the code. Note that for this code, the input array type is a list of real number, and since bubble sort is an in-place algorithm, we don't need to return anything. I hope you find my walkthrough helpful and made the code easier to understand. So far, we've covered what bubble sort is, how to implement it. Let's discuss its time complexity and optimization. There are three types of time complexity: best case, worst case, and average. For a short answer, I listed them all for bubble sort. But today, we'll go through how to calculate the worst case time complexity because it's most useful. Here's the array. The array length is n. In the first scan, we do a total number of n minus one times of comparisons in the worst case. In the second scan, we do n minus two times of comparisons in the worst case, so on and so forth, until in the final scan we do only one comparison. Note that after each scan, we do one less comparison because there is one more element already in its right position. To get the time complexity in the worst case. We calculate how many comparisons we need to do in total in the worst case. So we sum up the number of comparisons for each scan, and the sum is like this. Since it's an arithmetic sequence, the sum is like this. When n approaches positive infinity compared to n square, the rest is neglectable. So the worst case time complexity is big O of n square. How to improve bubble sort? One way is to reduce the number of scans. With the previous method, we need a total of n minus one scans. Instead, we can set a new stop condition. If not a single element changed its position after this scan, the sorting is finished. It makes sense if you think about this example. The array length is ten. Instead of nine scans, we only need two. Another way is to bubble from both ends. In a single scan, the larger element bubbles to the right, and the smaller element bubbles to the left. But note that all these improvements won't work in the worst-case scenario, say this one. However, there are many other sorting algorithms way faster than bubble sort, such as merge sort or heap sort, which we will discuss in the coming videos. So thanks for watching. Please like this video or subscribe to our channel below if you like to support our work. And we'll see you in the next video.